Diplomacy is not an option. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. You were born a feudal lord. Sounds good, right? But you're bored of hunting, executions and tournaments. Even of feasts with beautiful maidens. I wouldn't get bored of that. The only dream left, your castle surrounded by hordes of enemies. You would waste no time on negotiation. This is your chance to show them who is in charge. When you put her in charge. This is a city builder, um, but it's a bit like Stronghold. It's a bit like the Arbillians. Uh, you get attacked by waves of enemies coming on different days. Uh, there's a campaign. Uh, it's the first part of the campaign that's been released in early access. So it's that kind of game where you build up a fortress, you have to defend it, and you're going to get hit very, very hard. The campaign's quite funny. It's, it has a it doesn't have cutscenes, but it has like a storyboard uh, going into it, so you can actually get a little bit of a background to your character. Uh, it's quite funny, actually. I uh, quite enjoy it. The only thing is, the missions are brutally hard. Um, I'll come to that in a second, but first of all, I'll tell you how you actually play the game. So you start off with a, a big building. That's your... Uh, your stronghold if you like if that goes down it's game over so you have to protect that you do that by raising up an army and building a wall around your uh, kingdom now the wall starts off as wood but as you unlock stone you can reinforce it with stone and uh, upgrade all stuff like that through the tech tree you build a shit ton of units there's archers there's crossbowmen there's regular infantry there's spearmen there's these big guys with maces there's cavalry there's healers there's also trebuchets catapults and things like that that you would expect in a medieval game because this is set in medieval times you're not fighting zombies you're fighting peasants uh, who have revolted up against the uprising of your taxes little bastards kill them all so it follows the usual path of uh well building order such as get your lumber mill down so you can chop down the trees uh, to get yourself some planks to make some buildings get some berry pickers out there uh, so you can get some food for people get some houses down and then after each night if you've got a house there people will come and live in it so it increases your population you need population for workers and for uh, troop requisition so you need to build a lot of houses but you'll need a lot of food to feed them all uh, the balance keeps going up and up and up you have to stone mine iron mine um, and all of that kind of stuff then eventually you'll uh, unlock farms as you upgrade your main building you'll unlock different things like universities to uh, give you different tech uh, farms as I've said just to, to really bolster your um, food income you'll eventually unlock foresters which really need a, a, a buff because this shit uh, the, I, I don't know what the ratio from foresters to wood choppers is but I had a one to one and it was just garbage you, you need to build a few of them so they're pretty they're the laziest fucking foresters I've ever met in a game and then of course you've got to put a wall around everything you can use natural features like cliffs and, and mountains uh, as a wall as well and all the maps are procedurally generated even in the campaign which is odd uh, the campaign maps aren't sort of built by the developer it's all just you know whatever you just if you so if you get a shit map just reload it and you'll get a get a better map hopefully so there's that you can save it any time you like which is great play it the way you want in that sense you can save it any time you like it auto saves uh, so it's it's really it's forgiving in that sense i say that it's absolutely freaking brutal i've had me ass kicked on all three difficulty levels on easy i got me ass kicked on wave uh, on, on mission two uh, four times in a row guys um because what what there isn't such a thing as easy in this game all it does the only difference between brutally hard and easy is if you choose easy i think you get a catapult a little bit a tiny bit of extra resources and a couple of other um, soldiers at the beginning that's it hardly makes any difference whatsoever you're still going to get wrecked if you don't know how to play the game the way it's intended and that's the problem because the way this is intended to be played is a breakneck stress level at 100 percent speed as you fly around the map looking for the little villages that the peasants uh, are in and raising them to the ground because if you don't do that you will not get crystals which i'll come to in a minute because you get one of them every time you take down a peasant building but more importantly if you don't take them down when you get hit with waves they will bring more men from these villages to hit your walls so you really have to clean the map out with your army now building up an army big enough to do that is pretty much impossible in the early 
first, I would say, six or seven waves. So what you have to do is kite, micromanage, kite the enemy by keeping your archers still and moving your infantry around so the archers take out the enemy as you're drawing them towards them. It's tedious and fucking boring. And I really don't like the fact that you have to run around the map doing that. It put me off the game completely because that's not really what I want to do in this. I want to build a kick-ass castle with awesome defences and have all kinds of shit. I want to play Stronghold with it, essentially. Now, you can't in the in the campaign. That, that, is, it's, that is the only way you can beat the campaign. If you try and turtle, you'll die. You have to go out there and kick ass. And, you got, and then there's the build order, which has to be right as well. You have to build the right build order or you're going to get screwed as well. However, there is an endless mode uh, as well as the campaign. And the endless mode caters for people like me who want a more of a stronghold experience. Uh, you can set uh, the difficulty to whatever you want and it keeps the enemy at bay a little bit longer. You still have to go out and take down a few camps because I've mentioned before you get crystals and crystals are essential to your survival. Every time you take an enemy building down, you'll get a little crystal. Now what they do is they allow you to use magic in the game. Once you build an obelisk, you can unlock four different types of magic. One spawns some uh, death knights, which are really imbalancedly awesome. They only last a certain amount of time, but they can kick ass while they're there. Another one is like an ion cannon. There's a heal, and then there's this huge freaking meteorite, which is just awesome. When you clatter this down, it just is brutal, but it costs 10 crystals. So you have to wipe out 10 huts for, to fire one of them. And there's not an infinite supply of huts on the map either, from what I've found. So you have to go out there, take down the huts as well, but not as brutal and certainly not as stressful uh, early game as you do in the campaign. You can in the endless mode quite easily build a nice kick-ass castle have it in, a, in its own big grounds as well so that you can have lots of farmsteads lots of houses all kinds of mining operations going on you can get a decent size army i'm still playing the same game I'm on day 70 or something um it's starting to get a bit a bit iffy now there's there's some shit tons of enemies coming at you now but it's great fun i'm having a blast i don't think i'll ever go back to the campaign uh, because it's not my kind of the game style, like I've explained on the campaign, is not what I want to do in this kind of game. But I understand that there's a lot of people will love that, and that's exactly what they want, and that's great. So you, you've, it caters for, for both kind of players, this, which is which is really really good. So if you just like me, and you just want to kind of turtle up in a big, nice, fancy white castle with shit loads of defenses uh, and get attacked off thousands of enemies, well peasants, then this game's for you. If you want to go out there and be more aggressive and uh, have the stress factors it's got that as well um it's in early access it's still going to go through a lot of changes like i say the campaign isn't fully finished yet um but it's a great little game now it has an option for diplomacy uh, as well um which is odd considering it's called diplomacy is not an option the options are diplomacy is not an option diplomacy off and diplomacy no which i thought was freaking hilarious so there's that um price wise um i've just heard it's going to come in at 19.99 which i think is pretty reasonable to be honest with you um it's a fun fun game i've been playing it all day today and i'll certainly be playing it again so I, i'm going to give it a thumb up i definitely think this is worth buying uh, it's just a great little fun game and you can play it whichever way you want which is a nice thing that's added it's also not finished so there's more features coming and uh, we'll see where this goes before it fully fully releases so there you go guys diplomacy is not an option but it is worth a buy